Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to Study Tips from a professor that wants you to learn faster, better, smarter, with less effort. Today, we're going to be looking at the Feynman Technique on learning. Uh, the Feynman Technique, as it's called and referred to, is a method of learning from physicist Richard Feynman. Uh, he was a Nobel laureate, and he had a lot of really good things to say and to teach over his career. Uh, specifically, the Feynman technique is a really interesting area or concept uh, that's been widely adopted. Portions of it were developed by others throughout history, so I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's only his ideas, but one of the things that he really brought to bear on it is there's a difference between knowing something and really knowing something or really understanding something. Uh, it's been well quoted uh, in many, many sources, uh, his discussions on this topic. Uh, it goes back to when he was a kid and there were discussions on, you know, do you know the name of this bird? Uh, knowing the name of the bird doesn't really know mean you know how the bird actually flies or um, some of its specific characteristics. Uh, so it, it makes us pause to think, do we really know what we think we know? And there's this great uh, story that Charlie Munger has um, used. And I put the, I'll put the link to um, the story that's actually on Far Farnham Street, uh, a great blog that I uh, look to very often in the show notes. But Charlie Munger had this fictitious story, and it, it revolves around Max Planck, another Nobel laureate. Uh, it's fictitious, so don't don't start uh, giving me comments that this is, is not true. Um, it is fictitious, but it, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, Max Planck, the Nobel laureate in the early uh, 1900s, around the time of Einstein, a little bit older than Einstein, was touring Europe, and he was given giving these speeches over and over again. And he had this chauffeur that went along with him. And the chauffeur heard the speech so many times uh, that he would, he thought that he could actually take Planck's place and do the speech and do okay. And, you know, Planck, having gone place to place, was a little bit tired of doing uh, the speech. So he said, sure, you can do the speech. And so they went into this place and the chauffeur did the speech and he pretty much did it perfectly the way Planck would do it. And uh, one of the journalists uh, that was in the audience um, stood up and asked uh, the chauffeur, supposedly Planck, a question that was kind of complicated and the chauffeur had never really heard it before. And so he referred back to the journalist and he said, oh, uh, this is uh, such an easy question to answer. I thought it would, there would be something much more complicated. I'm going to defer the answer of this question to my chauffeur who's sitting in the audience. Really, it was the real Planck who would be able to easily answer the question. And so to the point is there's a difference between uh, knowing something and really knowing or understanding it really deeply. And I think a lot of students, they just want to know stuff for a test. They don't really want to know stuff for knowing it, but there's so much more value in really understanding these concepts and the investment of time that you put into really knowing and understanding something can be used over and over again in your careers, that it's really value, valuable to develop some techniques around really learning something more deeply, not shallow. Shallow is remembering names of stuff and being able to understand something to basically pass a test but really not understanding the core concepts behind it. So knowing enough that you could sort of memorize certain points and pass a test, but not really be able to apply it. So I like to sort of embed in my students to try as much as possible to really know something or understand it. So this technique, it works pretty well. And as Einstein said, any fool can know the point is to understand. So as I said, this is named after Richard Feynman, a Nobel laureate. Uh, he actually worked on the Manhattan Project uh, as a very junior person and then uh, later on with his research uh, won the Nobel Prize in it. He was actually on the investigative committee for the uh, early um, space shuttle disaster as well. So he's a very well-known, renowned uh, individual in that area. So 
Point number one of the Feynman technique. Find a topic you want to learn. We can't learn everything, so what's a topic you want to learn? Uh, maybe you're doing a course and uh, it's on deep foundations and you're kind of puzzled by certain parts of it. Being a construction professor, I'll use uh, the deep foundations as a, a quick example. And so that's an area that you've decided you want to learn more deeply. Or maybe there's parts of the course uh, such as um, friction piles that you want to know and understand more deeply. Um, so identify that something that you're struggling with and that you have an interest in wanting to find out more about it. Because uh, perhaps the teacher explained it to you, but it did, you didn't quite grasp it uh, fully. And so you need to look at it in more depth. Um, and perhaps you can see this uh, learning of this as uh, being necessary for a fundamental progression in your future studies. So you see a lot of opportunity and promise with this. Or perhaps you see if you don't get this, you're going to have trouble passing the course. That would be another um, way to go with this. You can't study everything, but you're going to pick certain things that really sort of uh, crank your interest and motivation or that you find that is necessary. Because this is one of the most important points in it is what am I going to actually look at? What am I going to dive into a little bit more deeply? And then study it really study it, not just on the surface. Uh, go beyond the teacher's explanation. Uh, research it online. Try to find good, reliable sources. That's the next problem, too, is vetting what's a reliable source. But look for what you would consider to be reliable sources uh, online. And there is so much information out there trying to narrow it down to what will give you um, the best understanding of the material. So you can do a little bit of superficial research and then dig down into some of the articles that you find that are um, really useful for that particular topic. You could also check out some YouTube videos if there's some experts that are giving advice on these particular topics uh, to get a better understanding, to get a visual understanding, because it's a different way of learning from reading to uh, visual, especially if we're using something like Deep Foundations. That could give you um, some real uh, visual understanding of the processes, the equipment that's being used for this, and how it's applied. Review your textbook and notes. Well, did you take notes? during the lectures. That's always important to try to take uh, notes that you can refer to. And is there a textbook? Did you grasp those concepts? Did it refer to other areas that you could look into more deeply? Very often that's the case. Um, and talk to your peers about it. Are there other people that are taking the course as well? You can have study groups that can discuss various points that May, maybe there's somebody in the study group that they're a little bit more uh, attuned to that particular topic and that can be helpful for you really beginning to understand it. Now, the next point is uh, regarding writing and teaching. Can you write this down in such a way? Take those notes that you have from your research and from the classes and can you write it and explain it as if you want to explain it to somebody else, as if you want to explain it to a sixth grader uh, you know, can you crystallize it and get that explanation across? You're going to find that's very difficult when you're learning something to explain it. But that process is going to open up gaps. Oh, wait a minute. I can't explain that. What, what's going on with that? And then that allows you to go back, circle back, and fill in those gaps of knowledge so that then you can try again. And uh, try teaching the topic to someone is really forcing you to understand it. it could be uh, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your spouse, uh, whoever, uh, a colleague, that will really sort of help it resonate with you. And they'll pick up too on, well, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by, by that? And by talking to, pretending like you're talking to a sixth grader, they might ask questions back about it. Uh, so you can do this, you know, just by yourself if there's nobody else around. Uh, or you can find a victim <laughs> that you want to explain it to uh, that will listen to you, your explanation. And then and you've done it, but it was probably not all that great. It was not all that smooth, and it, it was probably more complicated than it ne needed to be. Can you simplify it? Even though you're talking to a sixth grader prior to, can you make it more simple in its approach? You know what? 
some teachers they overcomplicate things and they confuse people uh, very much. Even in my in my early days, I would tend to do that. I would overcomplicate something in my explanation, and I, I would feel that I was making it worse in some cases. Or I get feedback from a student, sir, why didn't you just say this about that? And you know, I think about it, and it's like, oh yeah, that's a lot more simple way of saying it. Uh, or if there's something in the real world that you can use to sort of explain it as an example, that is helpful too. So how can you how can you simplify your explanation? Uh, you know, if I if I'm talking about goal theory or something like that, if I can use an acronym that people can remember, like SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time bound, it's easier. It's easier for people to pick up on it. It's easier for them to remember. It's easier for me to explain it. And that makes it um, uh, really deep knowledge. You're really getting it at that point. You might have to circle back a few times. Again, you might pick up a few gaps. But that's going to, that understanding and knowledge that you just built in that learning process, you're going to remember it for a long time. It's going to be really, really sticky. So like I said, number one is fundamentally important that you pick important topics because you're spending all this time on it. But you know what? Those topics, you're going to know really well. And if, they, if other topics build on top of that in future courses or in your career, that will again serve you really, really well in your career. So hopefully this uh, video is giving you a pretty good understanding of uh, the Feynman technique. And he also had this great quote, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. Sometimes you think you know something really well, you sit down to do a test and then you're shocked by the questions. Guess what? You didn't know it as well as you thought you did. You kind of convinced yourself that you knew it really well. Or you knew the name of something, but could you actually explain what it's doing, what it means, and how it works? Um, big difference. And so don't have to take my word for it. You can look up some of Feynman's uh, videos online, but tr try to apply it in your learning. And we have more information available to us than Feynman had readily available in his day. Um, the biggest problem we have today is actually filtering it out for good information so that we don't spend hours and days studying the wrong information. So keep that in mind as well. So this more or less follows the Feynman technique. There's always these little slight different versions, but I've tried to make it as applicable to you today as possible. So continue on and enjoy your studies and have a wonderful day. I'm Tom Stevenson uh, signing off and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video, please click the subscribe uh, or select some of the other videos in this series. Bye for now.